On this episode, we talk about government shopping stimuluses and muse about the most and least Thai things that each of us own. So if you want the inside scoop on what it's like to be expats, you found it on the Bangkok Podcast. Sawati Krab, and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who followed a friend to Thailand in 2001, and when he went back home, I just kind of didn't. And I am Evo Terra, an American expat living full-time in Bangkok since the beginning of 2016. Thanks for joining us here in the Big Mango. So today we're going to be talking about Thailand's annual shopping spree at the end of the year, but we don't mean Christmas. Um, but before all that, we do need to once again thank one of our supporters on Patreon who's helping us keep the show going and free of annoying ads. Indeed, we do, my friend. And this week, it's Sean. Now, his parents might have spelled that funny, but trust us, it's pronounced Sean. Yeah, S-I-O-N. It's like speaking Gaelic or something like that. But I guess it's cool if it's pronounced Sean. I'm, I'm down with that. So as you know, Evo, I do like to do some research on our patrons. And I did find out something interesting about Sean here. Turns out when he was in college... He made a few extra bucks being a live model for some of the art classes. Ooh. You know, nothing crazy, just standing there posing, you know. like. That. And uh, one time on a dare, he posed for a nude modeling class. As you do. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, just, it's just a one-off. But the next class, he went back to normal, but the women in his class were having none of that. And they all threatened to quit their programs if he didn't go back to nude modeling. So there you have it. Our buddy Sean has a rare gift that you and I can only dream of. Yes, and, oh goodness, with that, to help support the show, get additional uh, bonus content, get early access to shows like this, get some cool swag, and even get Greg to make up some wild and completely unbelievable things about you, go get signed up at patreon.com slash Bangkok podcast. Now, with that silliness out of the way, can we get to the topic of hand here? Tis the season to be shopping, fa la 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 la, all of that. I thought you were going to sing. Ah, uh, well, you know, you want to go too far. <laughs> well, because you're the first one that noticed this story that broke last week about the government's end of year shopping stimulus package. Now, what's the deal with that? Yeah, yeah, it's called the Shop for the Nation package. Shop for the Nation. <laughs> That's it. Shop for the Nation. <laughs> okay, not the most creative titles, uh, but 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 there you have it. Now, this started on Saturday, November the 11th, and it runs all the way through to December the 3rd. December the 3rd. That's a few weeks before Christmas. That leaves three weeks of frantic shopping at full prices yeah. before the end of the year. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And you're going to have to pay, pay full prices anyhow. But this is the third year in a row that the government, the NCPO, has offered a tax rebate. But they keep changing the promotion dates and the length uh, every year they've done that. And I, and I have no idea why, so don't ask me that. That has to do with Thai politics and finance. So there's two things I'm not getting anywhere near with separate, certainly not when they are together. But what I can tell you about are the details as I as I understand them. However, you should understand that the details are rather hard to pin down and piece together, at least as of this recording. It, it seems to be an evolving process. But the gist of it is, is this. If you are Thai, you can deduct, or if you are in Thailand, you can deduct up to 1,500 baht, which is almost 500 bucks, I think. Like 15,000 I'm baht. sorry, 15,000 baht. Yes, let's get this property. 15,000 baht, which is nearly $500, uh, from your taxable income based on certain goods and services you purchase. Certain goods and services. <laughs> Yeah, I bet, I bet there was a queue of people begging to get their goods and services thrown on the official list of goods and services. Yeah. So what kind of goods and services does that mean? Well, the problem is I'm not sure, and I'm not joking about that. Right now, the information published has simply said just that, certain goods and services. That's the way it is officially represented in all of the news reports from – the Bangkok Post to the Coconuts to Reuters and even going to the Ministry of Finance's website, all they're saying right now is certain goods and services. Now, mm. early on last week when it first broke, uh, it was reported that you could not get the rebate for booze, for tobacco, for buying cars and boats, which would be awesome. I 
Damn um, it. Or even buying fuel for your, I guess, I guess cars and boats. Though so those things are not supposedly part of the scheme, but again, none of the official documentation says anything about that. I also saw initially that airfare wouldn't be covered. Like I was rejected airfare when I tried to take advantage of this last year. However, that is all massive conjecture. What we do know, the only thing we certainly know for a fact, is that those of us who actually do pay taxes, that's me. I'm pretty sure that's you, Greg. Um, That's me. When you shop between now and December the 3rd, don't just get a receipt. You have to specifically ask for something called a tax reduction form. Hmm. I have no idea how to say that in Thai. There it is, more paperwork again. You know that's going to be in some warehouse somewhere, but they're going to be able to whip it out on a moment's notice. Well, that's if you can get it because, again, the receipt itself doesn't do it. You have to ask for a tax reduction form. Now, according to the news articles I'm reading, chances are you'll get this tax reduction form from the exact same place where you line up to get your VAT refund paperwork like i'm i'm leaving the country and i'm on an american passport in a few months or in a few weeks so the new computer i bought i get my vat money back anybody who's listening to europe we know how this works if you're in a country you're not a citizen with you take you can get your vat if you leave the country with that same good and services so you'll probably have to go to the same vat stand to get your tax reduction form however this also works for food purchases so Greg, can you point to the VAT refund counter at Indian Food 17, our favorite little Indian joint down the street? Yeah. I, I just imagine the look on their face if I ask, uh, yeah, can I have a tax reduction form for my chicken tikka masala? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It is funny, though, that they said it doesn't apply to cars because you know what happened the last time they tried to get people to buy cars? No. That was when Yingluck was prime minister. Oh, and I forget the exact details of the whole thing, but they they gave some kind of a deal or a break or an incentive for people to spend to spend money on their first car. Okay. And it was great because now everyone has a car. But I guess no one really thought about what the knockdown effects would be because at the end of the year, there was an extra 50,000 cars on Bangkok's roads and traffic was like twice as worse than it had been in the last 50 years. So, you know, this is cause and effect, Mm. but (laughs) at least you can't do that this time. Although I don't understand the booze. I'd like to go in and spend a few a few bottles of Jack Daniels or something. I, nice. You would think that it seems like an easy way to get to the maximum number, but um, but that's the deal. That's as we understand it right now. Um, so there, there's also <laughs> the fact that according to some reports, you actually have to have an annual income of more than 150,000. But that's annually, which likely is is not a problem. It's certainly not for our audience. You know, where they're either full time expats uh, or they're Thai nationals who want to keep their eye on what us crazy for long are actually doing. So chances right. are, our listener, you will have no problem making that one fifty k. About twelve twelve thousand baht a twelve thousand yeah. baht a month, yeah. which is if you're, you know. if you're full if you're working full time, you, you you certainly have you're you're going to get that one right. But I think the bigger challenge is going to be getting the people that work at the revenue office to actually interpret the law the same way you might interpret the law because there's the rub didn't happen to me last year. There was things that should have been discountable. Should I had got the tax reduction, but they came back later and said, no, sorry, you have to write us a check or come back in and give us another 530 bot because that rebate we gave you wasn't legit and it wasn't worth fighting it. So, but here's the bottom line guys. If you want to take advantage of this, if you're paying taxes in Thailand, save every single receipt and ask for that tax reduction form on every single thing you buy from now until December the 3rd, 2017. And then just kind of hope everything works out in the best possible way it can, because if so, you're going to get 15,000 baht reduced from your taxable income, which sounds like a deal to me. I could use the money. And they've done this every year. I, I did I did a quick bit of research, and they've done this uh, two, they did it in 2014, they did it in 2015, and they did it in 2016. That's right. So it, it seems to be kind of an annual thing, but it's never – it's never presented as such. No. It's always presented as like, hey, a surprise from the government who <laughs> is in charge this year. <laughs> and I got it. I mean, shop for the nation. The marketing boys need to get back to work on that one. This sounds like a communist slogan on some That's paper true. or something. Yeah, it's very true. Shop for the nation. Well, um, yeah, I, I, let's, let's find out how to say tax reduction form 
Could you find that out for me? That'd be awesome. Someone, yes, write in right now, listener. Tell tell us how to say tax reduction form. What is the right thing to call that in Thai? Please, we need to we need to know what this is. Have someone write it in Thai. Take a picture of it and then just show the your uh, picture on your phone to everyone you talk to. What a fantastic idea! Again, listener out there, you are you are the Thai person listening to this. Please tell us tell us what to say and tell us how to write it. Send it in. Uh, We we would really (laughs) appreciate you doing that. If only I knew a Thai person that could help me out. Well, I wasn't. You're already mad at your wife, so that's She's not it. She's mad at me now. <laughs> I'll ask someone else. Yeah, right. She'll write in Thai like my husband's a dickhead or something, <laughs> and I'm showing it to everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, let's stick with the shopping theme now, or at least the purchasing theme. Now, um, I've lived here for the better part of uh, 16 years, and Evo, I assume you are starting to assimilate into Thai culture as you slide into three years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm doing a pretty good job, at least to an extent, I think. Uh, of course, my assimilation pales in comparison to, you know, as you mentioned earlier, your, your almost two decades of being here. Right. Well, I've assimilated into a lot of aspects. Some I haven't. A lot I have. But um, I do like to buy things. Retail therapy, they call it. <laughs> but um, so we thought it would be fun to uh, take some time to talk about the Thai things that each of us own, seen from the perspective of uh, our Western friends and family, as well as from the perspective of Thai neighbors or Thai family. Now, specifically, let's talk about the most Thai thing that each of us has purchased, as well as the least Thai thing that each of us has purchased. Yeah, I think this should be kind of a fun topic. As as you mentioned, you know, we both like to buy things, and being in Thailand, we we have bought Thai things, right? Some things that we buy, like groceries or like clothing, it's really less of a choice as much as it's well, I've got to buy something, right? It's a staple, right? I'm not I'm not really buying Thai food as much as I'm just buying food. This happens food, yeah. to be Thai food, right? <laughs> and yeah, I have a Thai fan in my living room. It was made somewhere here in Thailand, but that's only because it's, this is Thailand and you have to have a fan or five in your house to keep you going, right? I right. want us to talk about the much more conscious purchases that we're going to discuss here, right? So, so Greg, I'm going to ask you to, to kick this thing off. Uh, what is the, the most Thai thing that you own that you've purchased and what would your Canadian friends think about that Thai thing? Well, I had to do a little bit of thinking about this, um, but and I, I've mentioned it on the show before. I don't remember when, but I know we've talked about it and it is the shelf of gods <laughs> above the um, bedroom doorway in the hall. Um, and it is when we moved in, um, we got some furniture built for us built in. They got a bed and some closets and things. And the guy said, do you want a Buddha shelf as well? And my wife said, yes, of course, that would be nice. And I was like, oh, sure. Right. <laughs> so now above above the door, we have this shelf. It's probably about, I don't know, probably about 60 or 70 centimeters deep and probably maybe about 120 centimeters wide. And it is full with Buddha images, little windmills. There's a plastic Ziploc baggie of ash we got from a quote unquote lucky temple in Hong Kong. There's a few flowers, there's some necklaces, there's various other god knickknacks that my mother-in-law and my wife have put up there, and I mm-hmm. don't even know what's going on. But um, if my friends in Canada saw that, they'd probably be like, why do you have that in here? Because most of my friends in Canada were atheist, and to see something like that is just sort of a, not only is it, oh, it's a religious thing, that's okay, but it's, oh, it's a Eastern religious thing, and what does a windmill have to do with anything? <laughs> and these are the kinds of things, I mean, some of them, like the flowers, I assume, have to be purchased on a repetitive basis. You don't just buy flowers and leave them up there for six years. You don't you have to buy those on like a every other, I don't know, what's the time frame of buying, buying new stuff for the Buddha shelf? I don't know. I, the, when it looks dead, I suggested one time buying plastic flowers, but, you know, I was kind of laughed out of the room. <laughs> like, okay. <you> idiot. <laughs> The gods can see right through that. <laughs> Heathen. Um, yeah, so I guess every week, I don't even notice it anymore, really. But um, every time I do look up there, I'm like, oh, fresh flowers. They must have been changed recently. Oh, okay. So, yeah. There's no red Fanta up there, though. What? So it must it, it must be offerings to a different god than you see on the spirit houses outside. Cheaters, man. Yeah, I don't pretend to know. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's, that's, that's my most Thai thing, I guess. So it's your turn. What is the most Thai thing you own, and what would your American friends think? Well, I looked around the place. You know, we I have a significantly 
lower footprint here than you do. You know, you're invested. You've got 16 years. You you stole a Thai woman and made her have your child. I think that's the proper way to say that. Um, that's romantic. <laughs> so, you know, for us, we're in a fully furnished condo that we're renting here. I looked around with it. But I, but I think the answer to that one is the two Thai pillows that we bought um, not long after we moved here uh, from JJ Market. Now, Thai pillows... If, if most of our audience knows exactly what a tie pillow looks is and and what it what it means right but for for the uh, the less initiated let me let me try and 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 craft this idea here so they're like pyramids that you stretch oh those triangular pillow things yep that's what they are and they yeah. fold out to kind of like a half twin size mattress. They'll fold themselves out and, and well, they're not, it's not like they're, you know, a, a mechanoid. You, you have to unfold them, but they, they fold three ways. So you can sit on them kind of like a chair. You can lean up against them and let your back rest on, on the like triangle. A Roman, like a Roman emperor. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. Um, or you can lay them out because the first condo that we had was, was pretty small, wasn't huge. And when our son first came to visit, we didn't have a spare bedroom and and the couch was designed for Thai people, not an American sized couch. So we need we needed something where he could slip sleep on. So we went to the market and he bought these Thai pillows because we'd seen them. Our friends have had them in their houses and they were you know mostly comfortable to sit on. And as we've been traveling around Thailand with the Thai pillows are kind of everywhere that you look for for the more you know, just the, this place is outside. So we went and bought the, the these two things, you know, stuffed with I'm not sure, sawdust hopes and dreams. I'm not really sure what these things are stuffed with. Um, <laughs> and, and they're pretty much it. And they, now that we're in this big two bedroom place and we've got ample room and seating, they pretty much just sit in the corner as decoration. They're no longer being utilized by us. Every once in a while when my back is aching, I'll, I'll, I'll lay one out and lay down. Um, but for the most part, they just kind of, they just kind of hang out and don't really do anything. I don't get those things, man. It's like someone had a pillow design contest and they're like, how can we take this thing that's perfect and soft and lovable and make it as m uncomfortable as possible? How can we ruin the pillow? Let's give it corners yeah, and let's make it fold, <laughs> fold out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm not sure why they're called tie pillows because it's not really, it's not a pillow at all. It's really just this, it's a bolster more than it's anything. Yeah. yeah. You can't lay down on them, like put your, like put your head on them as a real pillow because they're, the angle is too steep and yeah. you're, you're going to have a sore neck when you. Major crick in your neck if you try and do that. There's, there, there's no doubt. Yeah. And they're comfortable yeah. to sleep on for about 20 minutes. And after that, you're awake, which is great, great napping pillows. They're a great napping platform because you, your body will force itself awake in 20 minutes. So great. Power. I don't know what you're talking about, about how, how they're a half double bed. If I lay down on top of them, I can well, barely cover it with both my butt cheeks. I right. You would, you would need both of them. Uh, <laughs> and, and in fact, another set turned in reverse on the other side, because you're, 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 you're longer and wider than most other people here. So yeah, it's, it's not, they're not Greg sized. <laughs> they're tie sized. No, a, 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 a Greg sized pillow would be a bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's flip the script back again, Greg. Let's go to the least Thai thing that you actually bought in Thailand. And least, what does the Thai person, perhaps the one you live with, think about this thing, the least Thai thing you bought here in Thailand? Well, I, I, I thought of two things. And one is an actual thing and one is just food. And although we said earlier that food doesn't count, this thing is a special type of food. But the first one is a copy on my Kindle of George Orwell's 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in Thai? Uh, uh, no, no, it's in English. <laughs> but for those that don't know, um, back when the most recent coup happened, I guess it was two, three years ago now. 14, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, people were, pro protesting was outlawed. So a lot of people decided that the best way to protest was to simply stand on a street corner and read a copy of George Orwell's 1984. And of hmm. course, that's about Big Brother and all yes. this kind of thing. So, um, And pretty soon that was made illegal. And you had a couple of people who were uh, reading it who were brought in for, quote unquote, questioning, just a chat <laughs> with the police. Uh, really? And then, of course, it moved on to eating sandwiches as a show of dissent against the, huh? the military. So, yeah, it was a whole thing anyway. But... That's probably the least Thai thing I own because it's still a little bit of a sensitive topic. But did um, you, you did read. you buy that book in Thailand? I bought it while I was here on the ah, Kindle. So I mean, it's it's I mean, 
the ones and zeros live in Thailand, but they came from America. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. But um, and the, the next thing I thought of is a bag of all sorts licorice. Ugh. You know this kind, the, the 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 ones with like the yellow and the pink circles and the black stems and the things like that. You like those things? No, no, no I you don't. don't. No, oh, they're great. No, no, they're not. They're licorice, and that's well, not good. Well, first of all, most Thai people I've talked to don't even know what licorice is. I'm sure there's a Thai word for it, but they don't know the the English word licorice. It's butthole flavored. And then when you give it to them. They, they sort of like, they eat it like a, a dog you've just given, you know, like caviar to or something. That's a terrible you know. metaphor. That's a right. terrible that, metaphor. That's right. A dog would love caviar. It's like a dog I, you've given a ball of tinfoil to. I'm not trying to say Thai people are dogs. I, let me rephrase. That was terrible. But it's just, it's just like giving something like you give them a piece of licorice and they sort of smell it and then like lick it and put it in their mouth and chew on it. And then they look at you and like, why do you eat this? <laughs> why? Most, why you do this? Why you do this to me? What did I do to you? And the most common question I get is, why are you eating plastic? I'm with you. And I I can't say I blame them. It does taste a little, at least the consistency is a little bit like plastic. So yeah, licorice is not popular in Thailand. Um, so I bought it at Villa Market, which was probably mm-hmm. overpriced, but a little bit of taste from home. Stuff that I like, but yeah. That's uh, you're not going to find that at any movie theater snack or or Thai corner store for sure. Yeah, I I had no idea that the Thais uh, are 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 anti licorice people. I am an anti licorice person, so maybe that's why I'm in Thailand. I heard the calling of come here, and we will never force you to to eat this anise flavored garbage ever again. My wife loves hey, it. Man. I hate it. When I when I when I came to Thailand, I didn't like Guinness and now I'm quite a fan. So there's time yet, Evo. There's time to turn you. Uh-huh. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the least Thai thing that you brought in Thailand and what do your Thai friends think? Clear easy answer for me on that one. Um when we got here, the first condo that we rented again, that little tiny place that I had to rent the Thai pillows from, it also came with a complete furnished bedroom, a bedroom set which had its own sheets and pillows and stuff, which was a little odd. I didn't realize that's how they did things here, but that's how they did things. But there was one problem. And well, of course, we went to Ikea to buy like a second set because we only had one, only one. What are we going to do? Wash that set? I have no dryer, so I can't like sleep on a bare mattress for a while. I'm not, no, thank you. So we went to Ikea to buy one and we got back home and we realized we made a grave error because all we had was a fitted sheet to go around the mattress and then the top comforter which is ridiculous why you have comforters in thailand but no (laughs) top sheet like the sheet that goes but your body goes on the fitted mattress cover and then there's a top sheet that goes over your body and then there is a blanket and or comforter or something else a quilt perhaps that goes on top of that yeah not in thailand in thailand when you buy a box a set of sheets it is only a fitted sheet and some pillowcases really it's been so it's been 20 years since i bought bed sheets in canada so i can't even remember what they were like yeah there is no top sheet and i hunted forever to find the top sheet i went to central world and they looked at me like huh i went to robinson's like no we have nothing like that so i went to ikea you know, Ikea has everything that you want. So, yep, the, the the most, the least Thai thing I bought in Thailand is a top sheet. And our Thai listeners right now are going, why would you want a top sheet? It's so hot. No. Why do you want that damn comforter? That's what's so hot. It's so hot here. All I want is a top sheet on top of me. And I never want the blanket to touch me. My skin, are you nuts? No. I need a top sheet. Do you sleep with aircon on? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I do too, but only because our our kid sleeps in our room too. Do um, Do you have a top sheet between you mm-hmm. and the blanket? No. Animal. No. And how do you live this way? Well, I get up in the morning and I uh, drink out of the trough. <laughs> have a Have a bite of my raw meat. <laughs> I go go to work. You have forgotten the wonderful silky feeling of a lovely top sheet on your buck naked body. <laughs> Ooh, stop. I'm getting all tingly. <laughs> so there you have it. Our list of 
most Thai things and least Thai things. Uh, I'm curious, listener, and as I'm sure Greg is curious as well, what where, where do you fall in, in this spectrum? Is there something that, for those of you that have been here for a long time, what do you have that is uniquely Thai, that is extremely Thai, and then is also just a nutsy thing that the regular ties in the world uh don't 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 get into that i would i would like to know what that is yeah that would be interesting yeah yeah That'd be cool. i would also like to know one thing and that's what you think about everyone's favorite segment of our show something called love loathe or leave this is where we look at one minor aspect of living in bangkok and find out if it's something the two of us love about living in bangkok loathe about the expat life or if it's something we hate so much it might just cause us to leave Thailand eventually. I have the honors this week, and yep. um, here it is, Greg. Can we okay. talk about these sticks of camphor people stick up their noses? <laughs> yeah, that's that's very Thai. <laughs> yeah, let's think what the, the most Thai thing could be. I, I thought about using this one because I have purchased one of these. Because you if have. you just ride on the BTS or walk down the street, you will see someone with what looks like a chapstick shoved up their nose. Or yeah. or a jar of mentholatum or Vicks Vapor Rub opened and their nose shoved inside of this jar, inhaling Vicks Vapor Rub or yeah. Mentholatum or whatever. And it's not like you see this occasionally. You see this daily. Daily. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you're in like uh you you've seen like a real to the core Thai person when you see someone with two yeah. in their nose, one up each nostril, just rocking it, just walking down the street like I'm not even breathing the real air anymore. I'm <laughs> just I'm just sucking down Vicks vapor up all day. Just, just puzzle. I tried it. I bought it. I tried it to figure out what's happening. And I think I accidentally like touched the inside of my nose with it. And then like, for, <laughs> and then I'm like that dog with a jalapeno just trying to just scrape it up. And uh, it was the most, <laughs> most disturbing thing I've ever done. I don't understand. Yeah. It's, I, I I've, I, I've, I've never actually bought one, what? but I have tried. I have oh, you've tried, tried it though. You've tried it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't stick one up my nose and just kind of leave it there for a while, but it is kind of refreshing. Um, it's sort of like when you go to smell a bunch of perfume or cologne and they have a little jar of coffee beans to sure. refresh your nasal palate, yeah. I guess you would say. Um, but I don't find it unpleasant, but I certainly don't understand how people just walk around being like, <laughs> for all day, it's just sucking on these things. That, that so. has got to lead to like deviated septums or, some sort of irritation of the, I don't know I'm, I'm not a medical doctor although I play one on the podcast maybe <laughs> maybe there's got to be some like you shouldn't do this there's that's like you know vaping right we're gonna find out in in ten years what all these weird heavy metals are doing as you would keep inhaling those into your not in Thailand of course nobody vapes in Thailand because it's illegal so we know that no one does that but I just wonder where it came from what's the history why why people continue to do it and is there any long-term lasting effects i don't know i'm putting it in strongly in the load column just because i did have the unpleasant experience of you know irritating my own nasal tissues with one i don't know yeah i, I wouldn't say i loathe it i i wouldn't i don't like it um i, I don't love it i would like it um it's good every once in a while just to kind of give you a little sort of a brighten up sort of like a little sniff of caffeine but yeah yeah to each their own i i don't love it i don't loathe it kind of in the middle i guess i don't know i'm, I'm just waiting for someone to have an attachment for the bum gun where you can stick your camphor stick into and that'll be a different thing altogether but Regardless of that, hey, by the way, guys, uh, if you are in Bangkok on November the 29th, we're having yet another big podcasting party over at Smalls on Suamplu, which is where oh, we love Smalls. had the same one last time around. It was a great time. Have the entire third floor reserved. We've already got about a dozen people saying they're showing up. So we would we will invite you now. You are, consider yourself invited. Please come free to get in. You have to buy your own beer. Sorry. Go to our Facebook page and give us a quick RSVP to the event. Now, it's not only for patrons, you understand, but, you know, the, the, what we, we want to see patrons there as well. Yeah, it's great. It was last time. It was really fun. It's on the rooftop. You get a great view of the building surrounding you, the sky, which probably won't be raining this time of year. It's the no. end of the rainy season. Cool weather has settled in, making it a perfect time to just have a few bevies outside. So, yeah, last time was really fun. And, uh, I hope everyone was there. 
can come again, especially our f- three favorite Spanish ladies. Yeah, yeah. The Spanish sisters who sp- sp- I had I'll have to go back to find out what that episode was. I had something very clever I came up with on the spot, but <laughs> did it start with S? Spanish uh, sisters from Spanish Spain. sisters who say shit. No, that wasn't it. I don't know what it was, but regardless. <laughs> Yeah, it's not only for patrons, uh, it's for an open invite for everyone, so anyone who's hearing this, uh, we hope to see you there. But if we do keep getting pledges, uh, uh, we might have to do a patron-only event soon. Now, we're well past the halfway mark uh, on a goal of ours on Patreon, and when we hit it, which could be this month, fingers crossed, we are obligated to start doing live, in-person events just for patrons. And we said we'd live stream the event so patrons all over the world can watch from wherever they are. So if you want to help uh, make that happen, you can get the show early. You can access our special patron-only bonus content, like the bonus episode we just did, talking about uh, how we always check bank machines in Bangkok so we don't get ripped off from these devious little skimmers and things like that. Uh, Head to patreon.com slash Bangkok podcast and lend us your support. We really appreciate everyone who does. And of course, thanks to you, listener, for listening to the Bangkok podcast. If you have something on your mind or just want to drop us a line to say hello, please leave a comment on bangkokpodcast.com or you can reach out directly to me on Twitter where I am BKK Greg. Or you can send us a message on Facebook, on Twitter, online. We're Bangkok Podcast in all of those places. We're good at responding to your comments, answering your questions, and uh, really enjoying the heaps of praise you jump on us. Wherever you are, wherever you want to talk to us, just reach out. We are likely there. For Greg Jorgensen, I am Evo Terra. We'll be back next week with more stories of our lives lived in the City of Angels right here on the Bangkok Podcast. Chokti Krap! So before we jump into the nitty gritty, that second word there is gritty. Yeah, right after nitty, it's gritty, not titty. Yeah. Yeah. I have a titty time getting gritty out. All right.